DJ Ben Ben Bandana. What's good? It's DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well Connected, even more respected, aka I am Buffalo. Keep calm, I feed these streets. And right now, you tune into the first edition of the Blackout Podcast. So, for those of you who don't know me, uh, who's not familiar with me, I'm just giving you a little bit, a bit of uh, background about myself. My name is uh, DJ Bandana Black from Buffalo, New York. Um, obviously, I'm a DJ, DJ Bandana Black. You know, you get it. But um, <laughs> I've been um, I've been a DJ probably for about maybe nine years I believe about eight or nine years I've been on radio for about uh, twelve years on ninety three point seven WBOK um, it's actually called Power ninety three point seven WBOK now just did a, a quick little name change and things like that but long story short I've been on radio for about twelve years uh, prior to that I ran a studio uh, in Buffalo New York on the East Side where I pretty much taught myself how to do production and pretty much everything that I need to do to get my foot in the door on radio. And I just want to give you a quick uh, story of how I got on radio because this can actually help some of the people that's checking out this video. By the way, this video is the first episode and this one is called How to Get DJs to Play Your Record. And I think my story will be able to help you a little bit, give you a little bit of motivation. So basically, I went to school, uh, ECC South for Communication and, uh, and Media Arts. And um, before I went to before I went to school for it, like I said, I had a studio, so I taught myself how to do everything. I went to the library, got books, I Google stuff, just learned how to just use different equipment, and basically taught myself how to how to run a studio and do production. So um, with school, I came down to the station, and I tried to get a, a internship. And the first time I came down, it was like, no, we got too many interns, uh, we can't use you right now. So. Could have got frustrated at that point and just said, forget it, you know, I'm going back to doing what I'm doing. But I was, I really wanted to be on radio. So I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get on radio. So what I did was I waited about another two or three months and I came back to the station again and I asked them again. I'm like, yo, I know, uh, yeah, I had too many interns before. I'm, I'm still in school. I really want to get my foot in the door. I'll do whatever y'all need me to do. I'll clean, do what, do whatever. Ain't got to be related, related to radio as long as I get in. They basically was like, nah, we can't even uh, do it right now. So they basically just, they dubbed me pretty much. It was like, nah. So I left again. So for the third time, I was like, you know what? Sometimes in life, you got to take a risk. So I came up here. I printed out my little resume, uh, made a resume showing all the different programs and stuff that I had taught myself how to um, how to do it. I keep saying teach myself because in 2017, the information is free. There's really no reason for not knowing how to do anything. And this is probably, this is over 12 years ago when I taught myself how to do it. So I came back to the station. At the time, there was a guy named uh, Mike Chaz that was on the radio, whatever. And I came up here and I was like, um, I want an internship. So the same guy, I think it was uh, Cole Porter, whatever like that, who told me that they didn't have enough, um, they, they didn't have room for me as an intern. So I was like, yo, listen, here go my resume, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, listen, you gonna, you gonna at least look at my resume or you're gonna have to call the police because I'm not leaving, like basically. I'm not saying you gotta give me an internship, but you're gonna at least give me a shot. You're gonna, you're gonna, look, at, you're gonna look at my resume and at least don't let me waste my time, whatever like that. So Mike Chaz was in the other studio as I'm walking up to the elevator. He's like, yo, this dude is bugging, this dude crazy. So he ran over, grabbed the resume, looked over everything like that. Oh, so you know how to do production, you know how to do this, da da da. I was like, yeah, I just I just want a shot. So he's like, how would you like a chance to uh, co-produce uh, the lockdown show that he had? And that's basically like running the boards while he's uh, recording different stuff like that. So long story short, he gave me a shot with that. I did it for like two three months. I got class credit, and at the end of the um, at the end of the three months, he was basically like, well, you can't get any more class credit, and we can't hire you. So at the time. I quit my job and I volunteered at the station for pretty much almost a year straight, uh, Monday through Saturday, six to ten, uh, just to get my foot on the door. And what I did was when I, I understood that the station, I wasn't just trying to be on air and do shout outs and be cool. When I got here, I looked at it, I said, what makes the money here? And the one thing that makes the money is commercials. So since I knew how to do production, I was like, I know how to do commercials. So I just did free production. Basically, I was a free worker for like a year and then finally they offered me, uh, um, offered me the position. But that's just big. Quick recap about me. Besides that, um, support local artists. Uh, pretty much, that's 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 what I'm known for. Supporting supporting independent artists, local artists, and just pretty much uh, loving my city. That's why I wanted the first one to be something. The first podcast to be more something that would be able to help people. So, how to get DJs to uh, play your record? Okay, so the first piece of advice that I have is this: is what you have to ask yourself. And this is what I tell local artists, and independent artists, when they hit me up for anything. I tell them right off the bat: Are you doing music? as a hobby or are you doing music as far as the music business because there's a big difference and a lot of artists get that confused they, they they're, they're more so taking music as a hobby and not as a business at this point in my career i don't do music as a as a hobby so if that's what you do this video is not for you i strictly do it for business business purposes i mean i love what i do 
and I want to get paid for what I do, which is you love music, you want to get paid for what you're doing um, eventually. But at this point, I, I can't, I just can't do it for fun anymore. I'm getting older, I got a family, different stuff like that. So that's the most important thing. You got to really sit down and decide to yourself, are you doing this as a hobby or this is a business? If this is a business, then you got to be willing to put any and everything in, in into it. The same amount of time that you put into social media, playing around or into girls or hanging out with your, your friends or like that. Like I said, I sacrificed a lot. You gonna have to pretty much do the um, do the same thing. So if you're doing it as a, a business, this is some these are some tips, and I guarantee you this. This is I guarantee like my word is the, the the strongest thing that I that I have. My word is good everywhere, and I tell you this. I guarantee you with these tips right here, I can't guarantee you're gonna sell a million records. I can't guarantee you every DJ is gonna play your record, but I guarantee you you're gonna get a better response from DJs, from radio stations, from promoters, from different people, just following these these, these key things. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because over the years, like I said I work with a lot of local artists and I see a lot of things that they do that just for for other DJs who who may not be so into supporting local artists, it's it's a Things that'll turn them off, where you, you you could burn a bridge without even knowing it, because you're, you're doing things that's not not helping you. So one of the first things uh, you have to do is make sure you got good quality music. Um, and what I tell artists all the time about what I mean by good quality music, I'm not saying you got to be the best lyricist; it has to be the best song. I'm just talking about the quality of it. I mean, honestly, a lot of music that's out now, I don't personally like. It's horrible to me, but the quality of it is good. By quality, I mean like the recording of it. Go to a good studio. Um, that, that's not saying that you have to go to a three hundred dollar an hour studio or whatever like that. There's some people who got studio on the projects, the booth in the in, in the closet, but they know what they're doing where you can get that prof professional sound. So just check out some different uh, different studios. And the first thing is make sure you got good quality music. Um, make sure your music is labeled correctly. Also, when you're sending out music, um, the, the the number one thing that I hate is like say for example if I'm DJing, I do like a lot of like local um, artist showcases and stuff like that. And an artist will come up to me, they say they have five songs to perform, and they'll give me a jump drive, and it'll just say track one, track two, track three, track four, track five, and 30 seconds before they go on stage, like, yo, bandana, play that I Get Money joint. It says track one, two, three, four, five. I don't know what your, what your, what your song is. That's not something that's hard to do. Like I said, this information is free, so make sure that your music is labeled uh, correctly. Um, this next this next thing, and this is a pet peeve of mine, this probably should have been number one on the list, is your artwork. Your artwork has to be good. I'm not, not, I'm not saying it has to be great. Well, no, your artwork has to be great. Your artwork is the most, the artwork is the most important thing um, that you're, you're gonna need to take care of as far as getting new people to rock with you, to even take a chance of your music. And the reason why I say that is because visual is the first thing that you see um, when, when you decide to listen to something, when you decide to go somewhere, say for example, if you see a, a, a flyer, you want to go out Friday night, and one flyer, it just says, party. <laughs> and the next flyer, it got bottles on it, it got chicks on there, look glamorous. You're probably going to go to the one that looks more glamorous. It's the same thing with your mixtape. There's no reason why you should be spending hundreds of dollars in studio time, and you got your man doing a $5, uh, $5 flyer. You don't know how many artists who have actually um, been able to rock with it, actually support heavy, who I've never even heard of before, but because their artwork was dope. I'll be in King City. King City is one of our local stores where they have like um, independent music or like that. A lot of times I go there uh, once a month to grab whatever the, the first five joints that I see. And it's the artwork that grabbed me. Now, some of the times, I'm gonna keep it honest, some of the times the, the music was complete trash, but at least they made that five dollars because the artwork was dope. I looked at the artwork, like, this joint giant worth uh, checking out. So the artwork is definitely, definitely important. I know it seems Minimal, sometimes as an artist, you think, like, well, I'm dope, I'm better than Jay-Z, everybody rock with me, da 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 Yeah, but nobody else is gonna rock with you if your artwork is trash, because they're not gonna take a chance um, listening to it. Um, another thing, too, uh, 2017, you, you can't do this for fun no more. It has to be for, for, for business purposes, so make sure your music is registered. Um, as far as registering music, at this point, if you're watching this video and you're a serious artist, because this is who it's for, you should know what registering your music is, but if not, Information is free. Just Google how to register my music. They have a, a new joint too called uh, Sound Exchange. Make sure you look at the Sound Exchange uh, also. That's another great site to um, register your music. And by registering, what it does is it'll it'll open up an opportunity for your music to be tracked so you can eventually get paid off your music, which is the point of what you're doing. I mean, the point is to make great music and entertain people and all that. But let's just keep it G. You want to get paid off of it. And that's, that's just what it is. Um, Another thing too, before you reach it out to, um, like I said, these are tips. You might not agree with this. You might not 
like this, but I've been in the game for, for 12 years, and these are things that I've reached out to other DJs and talked to and other markers, big DJs, um, and, and, and asked them different things as far as what they look at um, when uh, attempting to, to check out an artist's music or really rock with an artist. And one of the things, too, is a provable following. Um, Make sure you have some some, some followers. You gotta it gotta be more than just you saying that your music is hot. You could be the hot like just being honest with you in 2017. Like um, talent is not the most important part of making it in this music business. It's probably one of the, the, the least important parts at this point. It's just the way the game is. It's nobody's fault specifically. It's just what it is, and that's what you have to deal with. So make sure you have somewhat of a following. If you gotta get on social media and uh, like not send out a thousand links of your music like that, but just network with people. Maybe say like. Um, Hey, could you check out my song and just give me a review of it? I don't want to tag you like that, but I just want, to, want your opinion on it, whatever like that. Or sometimes you may have to invest in yourself and just pay people to do it. You might make make a contest or something like that where people check out your music and the best review, you give them some money or something like that. Just something to get more of a following because when you're coming to a DJ, they no no DJ, no radio station is there to, to create your career. They can help your career, but they can't make your career. They can't start your career. You already got to have something going on. In 2017, social media is pretty much what will show that you that you have a following, unless you can have provable sales or wh whatever like that. Um, as far as the paper trail, of music that you sold, shows, videos, different things like that. Um, another thing too, and this this is what bugs me out: social media. You have to be on social media. You have to have a Twitter. You have to have an Instagram. Um, it's probably good if you have a Facebook, but you don't have to have a Facebook. But I mean, I have all of them. Um, and, and Snapchat, all of the social media. Uh, all the social media sec uh, websites and, 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 and apps and things like that. Because in 2017, most of the music is be is getting out digitally. So you need to be on social media. You need to have a social media presence. You don't mean you don't know how many times I've actually um, dealt with artists who they told me like I don't do social media. Well, you don't do music business if you don't do social media. That's not <laughs> that, that that sounds like a you problem. You don't you don't really want to do this. It's not what you. This is not for you if you if you if you feel that way. You have to do social media, even if you just have one of your friends or something like that, um, post the stuff for you. But you have to have you have to have social media. Um, okay, as far as um, the next topic, um, as far as so so that was just basic the stuff that you need to do before you even reach out to a radio station or before you reach out to a DJ. And the reason why I say it's important to do these things before is because you really only have one shot um, as far as get, getting that initial uh, initial connection. Um, first impressions in this in this business is is, is critical. Um, say for example, if an artist, um, say for example, I, I hear an artist's music or whatever like that, right? And I say, um, I hit him up. I say, hey, I like your songs. Like I said, I scan through social media, SoundCloud, pretty much almost every other day looking for new music because that's pretty much what I like doing with the independent artists. So I'll hit an artist up and I'll say, hey, I like this song. Uh, send me the clean version. I just want to rock this joint out on one of my uh, radio shows. I'm, more, I'm on more than one radio station, more than one radio show. I do actually four, five shows on two different stations every week. So I'll say, send me your song. You don't know, like 90%, and this is no lie, 90% of the people when I do hit them up and, and say that. Now, this is rare. The DJ is hitting you up saying, I need your music as opposed to you chasing DJs to do it. So when this happens, this is an opportunity. 90% of the people that I, I give the opportunity to either send me a song that just says track one or send me a song that says track one and it's cursing in it. So if I'm a radio DJ and you know that I'm known for radio and you send me a song with cursing in it, honestly, I'm going to keep a G with you. Like I said, I don't have time to waste. I do this as a business. I'm probably just going to delete the email and never respond back to you again. Now that, might, that may sound dirty or like that, but... Most DJs ain't going to respond to you in the first place. So if I take the time to respond to you, to give you a shot, you got to be professional about it. That's why I'm giving you these tips of things to do before you reach out to the DJ. Make sure you have these things before it or whatever like that. So at this point, when reaching out to the DJs, reaching out to radio stations, reaching out to promoters and different things like that, like remember I said it's music business. So in this business, um, just keeping it G with you, either you're going to have to have money, a lot of money, or you're going to have to be able to network. They're both the same. Um, they're both worth worth the same. They're both both, both valuable. Say for example. Okay, we had a slight interruption there. Things happen. <laughs> you gotta you gotta be able to keep it moving. Basically, I'm I'm recording this uh, this first episode on my actual uh, iPhone, but me being me, not paying attention, I forgot to put it on airplane mode. So. While I was recording, I got a phone call, but we're going to pick up right where we left off. So where was we at? I was saying basically in this industry, you need uh, money, 
or networking or whatever like that. And that's just uh, just keeping the G, keeping it 100 with you. You got to either have a lot of money or really be able to network. And the networking part of it, um, that's one thing that I'm actually still working on, uh, working on myself. It's something that you got to work at uh, towards every day and get better at with, uh, with, with networking. Like, I've always been the type of person, I don't like really talking to people. I don't like being in big crowds of people. I don't really like talking to people just in in, in general or whatever you if I don't know you. But in this game, you have to do it. So what I mean by money or networking is if you have a record or you have a project that you're trying to push or whatever like that, um, you can have a lot of money to push it or your networking game can be crazy and get the same response. Um, so for example, say if there is an artist who hits me up and he was like, yo, um, I want you to host my mixtape or whatever like that. I want you to push my mixtape. So I'll give him a fee or whatever like that. He may have the money to pay the fee for me to do it. So boom, we can go about it that way. Or this may be someone who's kept in contact with me, who supported different events and stuff that I did, and who just just came off as a, as, as a friend, somebody who's interested in more than just, in this business, you don't wanna, even though we know this is what you're doing, you don't wanna just talk to us because you need, because you need something. Uh, from us nobody wants to feel that way whether you're a dj or a regular person you don't want people just to be around you because they just want something from you even though 99 percent of people do but you don't want to make that evident so don't always hit up a dj when it's just about um just about music what you want to do is you want to start uh following djs you want to start following promoters you want to start following um radio stations and different stuff like that on uh social media and it's cool to uh say say for example if you want a particular dj say it's dj dj no name Actually, I think it is a DJ name, DJ No Name. That's not a good example. Uh, well, we could just use them as an example. Say if it's, if it's DJ No Name, and you want to get uh, DJ No Name to to even respond to you, to respond to you, check out your music, whatever like that. So what you do is you, you you follow him on Instagram, you follow him on Twitter, whatever like that. You may comment on some of his stats, or if you put up a flyer saying that he's DJing somewhere or something like that, just comment on the joint like, yo, bro, I know you gonna rock it, da -da -da, whatever else like that. As opposed to just here's a link to my song, listen to my music, I'm the hottest person out, because that response is not going to be the same as you genuinely supporting support that person. This is kind of the mindset that you have to have. Like I said, when I in the beginning, when I became when I came on radio, I was looking like, okay, what makes the money here? How can I make myself valuable to the station? Even though I felt like the station would benefit by having me on here, this drink will be popular. They got Benny on Black on there, but I had to look at it as they don't need me. I need them. Even though that that may not be true, I had to look at it that way. You have to look at that 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 same way uh, with DJs. Also, you got to look at it as the DJ doesn't need you. He doesn't need to play your music. He doesn't benefit anything by helping you get your, your career going. Like I said, this may not be true, but you got to have that mindset. So you got to think about what can you do to make this DJ want to listen to you. Things like following a DJ on social media. If he puts up a flyer or something like that for an event, maybe you repost a flyer telling people, yo, make sure you come out. DJ Unknown is going, DJ No Name, DJ Unknown is going, is, is going to rock this joint. He's going to notice that. So say you do that for two, three weeks, something like that. And then say on the fourth week, you actually go to one of these events. So you show up to the event and you walk over to DJ, maybe try to get there a little bit earlier. Cause I like say if, a, if the club opens at, if doors open at 10 o'clock for a club or something like that, nobody's coming until, until 11. So maybe get there a little bit after 10 or like that, walk in over to DJ, hey, my name is such and such. I've been posting your joint on Instagram and Twitter. You're one of my favorite DJs. I see you doing your thing, whatever like that. He gonna remember like, yeah, that was cousin. That was, that was your posting thing. And right then you still don't, you still don't, Here's my CD, play my CD, or listen to my music like that. At this point, you're building a relationship. So when you go to the club, like I said, you don't have to pay for things or like that. But if I was, I'm just gonna tell you, if I was an artist, these are the type of things that I would do. So say I'm in a club like that, the DJ is, is setting up like that. I'm gonna ask him, Yo, fam, can I get anything for you? You need some paper towels? You want me to grab this? What you drinking? Oh, you, you you drinking a two for five? Well, let me go grab that for you. Boom. My name is such and such. Let's take a picture together. So after that event, that event was on Friday, Saturday, you post a picture, you want a DJ, yo, I was at such and such, DJ had his joint rocking, man, make sure y'all, make sure y'all, make sure y'all rock out with him. So then on that fifth week, and this doesn't have to be, this doesn't even have to be five weeks long, this can be within two, three weeks. On that fifth week, then you just inbox him, yeah, what's good, bro? I know you got an event Friday, so I didn't want to hit you towards the weekend, maybe on a Wednesday night, like, yo, I do music, I'm not asking you to play it or anything else like that, I just want to get your honest opinion on my music. And then you ask him for his email address, like I said, and this works. I'm telling this. This is what this is. This is how most of the people that I rock with has approached me, as opposed to me getting some random email with no subject line, no "Hey, my name is such and such," just a song. A lot of times, a song might be hot, but I can, I can I'm prejudging off of the way that you approach me. That this 
business relationship isn't going to work out. So you may have a hot song that could have took off because the way that you approached the DJ, I'm probably deleting that and not responding back as opposed to you sending me that email. Hey, my name is such and such, Bandana Black. I just want your uh, opinion on this and stuff like that. So that's what I mean as far as um, networking uh, with the DJs and um, keeping in contact with the DJs also too. So say once that DJ does start playing your music or if he does give you a review, don't just end it at that. Don't hit him up every day, but maybe once a month or once every couple of weeks, you know what I'm saying, send him a tweet or something like that. Like there's so many artists who, who, I, who I've worked with, who I've done a lot with, who I only hear from on the days that I'm, I'm doing a party or that I'm on the radio. And there's artists who don't need my support, a major artists that I hear from probably every week. Once a week, I probably hear at least from one or two major artists who's not asked me to play their music. They don't even need me to play their music. They're just checking up on me, black, what's going on out your way? Da -da -da, how, how you want the fam? Da -da -da. It, makes it, it, it makes it feel better than just, yo, can you play my music? Even though I know 99% of these people are only keeping in contact with me, so when they do have a record, I will play it. I mean, but that's the game. You gotta learn it. I'm just keeping a G with you. I'm keeping 100% honest with you on, on my opinion, how that, those type of things go. Um, another thing um, is, when you're reaching out to DJs, find out the type of DJ it is. So a lot of I don't do a lot of clubs. I'm not really a, I do clubs, but I'm not like a technically a club DJ. It's, it's rare that I do clubs, but it'll be people who will hit me up and say like, "Yo, I got the hottest club record, band in black. You need to play this joint." And I ain't did a club in the last three months. I'm probably not the guy that you want to get that to. You may want to get that to one of the club DJs you see doing clubs every week. So when um, you're, you're sending me on the flip side of that, if I mostly do radio and you saying, "Yo," Matter of fact, this is a true example. This actually happened. So a guy told me, he said, yo, he heard me playing another uh, artist on one of my shows. And he was like, yo, I got the hottest record out. We need to play this drink. This drink right here is official. This need, He said, this needs to be played on the radio in the email. So the song that he gave me within the first five seconds, cursed four times. Cursed four times within the first five seconds of this um, of this actual record. So I couldn't play the record, so I hit him back. Most Like I said, at that point, most DJs are just going to ignore you. They're going to delete you. I usually do that, but you say, you know what? I'm going to try something different. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them some advice. Yo, bro, you told me that this record was the hottest right now. I need to play this record on the radio. If I played this record on the radio, I'd be fired, and you'd be banned pretty much for life because you can't curse on the radio. So he says, yo... Um, and, and this is more than one artist, this isn't a specific artist, but he says, um, yo, my bad, it wasn't that joint, I'm going to send you a link to my uh, SoundCloud to, to a different joint like that. So then I got to go out my way, spend even more time searching for this SoundCloud thing, so I finally get to the song. So that's second chance. Now, usually you've done after one. Second chance, go to the SoundCloud, same thing, another dirty version. Then he hits me back again, like, okay, I finally got the clean version. But at that point, I'm like, man, I get to it when I get to it. I'm not wasting no more time. Like I said, you gotta have these things straight before you actually, uh, before you actually start reaching out, reaching out to these DJs. Um, another thing, uh, also too, um, one of the one of the pet peeves. This is gonna help a lot of people. One of the pet peeves, pet peeves that I absolutely hate is when I'm DJing. Say for if I'm DJing in a club, or no, better yet, say I'm DJing on the radio. I'm on the radio. Somebody will call me while I'm DJing on the radio. Saying like, yo, I just sent you a record. Can you play this joint? No. Like, respect respect the DJ the same way that you want respect. Respect my job. Respect that this is my profession. This is how I eat. And this is what I do. By you doing that, you're not respecting me. Because I'm supposed to stop what I'm doing, live DJing, stop, stop the whole program, download your song without even hearing it, and then just play your song because you, you wanted to. You had all week long to hit me up to try to get this try to get this done, but no, you wait until you see me actually doing it, and then you want to hit me up. So most of those people, block, delete. I'm not even answering the phone. Like I said, it's 2017. We ain't got time to um, we ain't got time to waste. So those are some those are some some tips. I guarantee you, if you follow some of those tips, I wanted to keep this first one kind of uh, short and sweet for everybody like that. But if you follow those tips, I guarantee you, you're going to get a better response from DJs, promoters. Uh, radio stations, pretty much anybody in this in this music industry. Another thing too, you got to be 24/7 with this too. You got to work towards your goal every day. A lot of times, I'll see an artist who will send me a song and I'm like, okay, his following isn't really that good. His budget really isn't that good. He wants me to host his mixtape and promote his music, play it in the clubs, different things like that. But I, I see him on social media every day, grinding, networking with people like that. I'm like, okay, he's serious about it, so I'm gonna be just as serious as he is about it and and help him. On the flip side, it might be a, a super dope artist who every stat is about, yo, who got loud, big bottles, uh, going to get these J's, whatever it's like that. You're not, you're not, every, every day you should work towards, towards your goal. Me, I work two jobs and I DJ and I do production 
and I, I do a bunch of other stuff and I have time to every single day I do something that go towards helping what I'm trying to do as far as with this uh, with this music stuff whether it's reaching out to a um, to, to a producer whether it's retweet retweeting or reposting a flyer every day I do something that's benefiting what, I, what I'm trying to do so that concludes the first episode of the blackout podcast with DJ band in the black shout out to our first sponsor too triple R clothing make sure you get that shout out to the whole we us uh, every week I'll probably be um, um, spotlighting somebody local doing something so whether it's like um, I may get like one of the local people that do dinners or like that show you a picture of it do a quick review of that towards the end of the video but the first joint sponsored by uh, triple wire clothing superstar buck the whole we us movement make sure you follow me on all social media at DJ bandana black and if you're listening to this on SoundCloud or one of the audio sites um, follow me on all social media at DJ bandana black but if you're watching this on YouTube, please do me a huge, huge favor. Like I said, I'm giving out this information for free, trying to help people, trying to rock out the, the podcast. We're going to start having interviews. We're going to have guests. It, it's going to be popular. It's not all going to be about music. It's not all going to be about news, all about sports. It's just basically all the stuff that I wish I could say on the radio without getting fired, we're going to do on a podcast because I can't get fired from my own podcast. Well, probably if YouTube like fire me, but I don't think they would. But that's basically what, we, what we're going to do. So if you follow me on social media, you know, I'm pretty entertaining. A lot of funny stuff happens in my life like that. But I just wanted to put, bring it all into one place. That's what we're going to do with the weekly podcast. But this is the favorite I need y'all to do on my YouTube. Go to YouTube, search DJ Bandana Black. This is all I need y'all to do. Everybody do me this one favor. Just hit the subscribe button, like the video, and share it to one person. Like the video. Please hit the subscribe video and then just share the video to one person, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just copy the little link, put it on your Facebook. Make sure y'all check out Bandana Black Podcast, The Blackout. Well, I'm up out of here. It's DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well Connected, even more respected, a.k.a. I am Buffalo. Remember, life is what you make it, so make it. I'm out. DJ Ban Ban Bandana.